Well, hello, my friends. Jason Levine here. So today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite new features in Premiere Pro CS5, and really one of the things that's such a buzz in the industry right now, DSLR editing. And one of the greatest things in Premiere Pro CS5 is that we can do this natively. So I'm actually shooting with a Canon 7D. I've got some additional 5D footage. You can even mix and match footages together at different frame rates in different frame sizes. You can even integrate things like flip video very simply just by dragging and dropping it right into the timeline. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is going to take you through the process of uh, actually working with DSLR footage inside Premiere Pro CS5. So let's go ahead and get started and start a new sequence. So I'll come over to my new sequence button, click down here, and right inside the sequence presets you'll see that we have a whole series of digital SLR presets at 1080p, 480p, and 720p. Now with my camera, the 7D, um, I support pretty much all of these. Now we're mixing and matching. You can see a combination of 5D and 7D footage. So the 5D footage I happen to know is at 1080p 30. So I'm going to start with that. Let's go ahead and name the sequence here. I'll call this Mixed DSLR. And I also want to point out if we go into the General tab there that we have a new editing mode specifically called out for DSLR recording. Very important. This is going to make uh, Premiere work much better, much more effectively with your DSLR footage. And you'll see that, again, even on a modest system, you can get incredible playback performance even when mixing and matching formats together. So let's go ahead and click OK on that and the sequence is built. Now again, Media Browser is going to allow us to preview this footage. So if I go into Canon 5D, I can double click on one of these. You can see I actually already had one in the preview window there. And what I'm going to do now is leverage those playback and pause resolutions, those fractional resolutions. Now I happen to be working on my Core i7 here, so I can actually get full res playback. But I don't want to hit the system too hard just to play back and kind of do my cutting. I don't need to see it full resolution all the time. So I'm just going to currently set it to quarter res. Let's go ahead and resize the window a little bit here, and let's hit play. And you'll see immediately it just starts playing back in real time. Now, I show you my capture program here is capturing at 15 frames, so you're not seeing it at its full 30 FPS glory. But you can see very quickly that it's playing, it's scrubbing quite beautifully. I can scrub through the timeline here. Not a lot going on in this clip. Let's go do a different one, but we can already drag this into uh, the project just like that. Go to this one over here. Again, let's set our fractional playback to quarter, and I'll make this full screen because what you'll see is the amazing thing with the Mercury playback engine. Uh, playback never stops. You can see that as I resize, now it looks a little blocky, a little grainy here when I pause it though, everything sharpens up, and that's because I've got my paused resolution set to full. So again, I can go back to play, looks a little looks a little pixely, stop, everything sharpens up nicely. So once again, I can take this footage and I can just drag this right into my timeline and start cutting all this together. So again, that footage happens to be 1920, 1080 at 30 frames per second. <coughs> So let's go back up here. Let's go into some of my 70 footage. I've got some shots that I took in India, New York that I want to incorporate as well. So if I come over here, I can take a look at this footage. Double click on this. Again, bring it into my source monitor. Now this footage happens to be recorded at 24 frames. But once again, I'm going to set this playback res to quarter. Let's go ahead and play this back looks nice. Again, I can make this full screen. Playback never stops. I can stop it and everything sharpens up beautifully. I can scrub through it here and set some in and out points. You can see just kind of a uh, little look at Times Square there. Set some in, set some outs. Go back out here and drag this right down. And even the fact that this happens to be 23976, you'll see that when I work with these two pieces of footage together, let's keep playing back here. Premiere plays them back smoothly. No transcoding, no fuss, no muss. Everything is beautiful. Now, let's take it a step further. Let's go back here. I'm going to go into my 7D. And I've got some footage that I shot in India, and this stuff was actually done at 720p 60 frame. And actually, this might even be 50 frame. I can't remember if I had changed the setting on the camera yet. So once again, I can work with my fractional playback and pause resolutions here. Let's play this back and see what we got. This is just this is me on a tuk-tuk driving through the street uh, trying to film with the 7D. Let's go ahead and bring this into the project. And you can see up here that we are in fact 720p 5994 frames per second. Okay, so again, what I can do is I can take this footage, drag it down. Now, of course, this is going to be um, a different size than the rest of my footage here. This is all 1080p. So I can simply right-click and scale to frame size like this. It 
it automatically scales up, wind back, play, and now I've got a mixture of 30 frame, 24 frame, and 60 frame all playing beautifully, seamlessly, together without transcoding. And here's one of the coolest things. What if I wanted to make a completely new sequence with these native settings? Well, we've, it's even easier than ever before in CS5. I can simply take this clip now. I don't even have to know the attributes, the frame size, the frame rate, the aspect ratio. I can simply take it, drop it onto the new sequence icon, and it automatically builds a sequence for me in the correct frame rate at the proper frame size with the correct pixel aspect ratio. So just to show you one of the really cool things that you can also do, again, this is all native, right? So we don't have to transcode. You literally can take this footage, drag it in from your drive and drop it in the timeline working natively off of these H.264 files. But what if you just want, you don't even want to do that. What if you just have it on the card and you want to simply read it off the card, pull it in, and then maybe just have it go offline? Well, you can do that. You'll see that I've got my little trusty card reader here, which will read CF cards, among other things. And I've got my 8 gig card. This is the first card that came with my camera. So I'm going to pop this in and pull some of that footage in. Let's take a look. So here's what I can do. I can take my little card reader here and you'll see that I'm going to pop it in. Well, you won't see it, but uh, you'll see that <laughs> a new drive will appear here on the side. So let's just scroll over here. Should see a new drive called No Name. There we go. DCIM 7D. And here we go, some additional footage. So once again, I'm now reading this directly off of the CF card, right? Pulling it right from the card, directly from the card reader. Didn't even bother dumping it to a hard drive. I can simply drag and drop this into my project. You can see here, this happens to be 1080 at 25 frames per second. This is actually the first piece of footage that I shot um, the moment that I got the camera. You can see Mr. Ruiz there. So I can take this footage, once again, drag it down into my timeline. Now again, this is going to be significantly different in size. So I can just right click, scale to frame size. Now it matches my 720p footage. I can play it all together in real time smoothly, beautifully. It doesn't get any easier than that. There we go. Again, I, I pause. It sharpens up. It looks real beautiful. Playback, green, stop, pause, beautiful. And we're good to go. It's that simple, friends. DSLR editing in Premiere Pro CS5, there's so much more you can do with it. But again, just to get started, to get rolling, it's that simple. Take it, shoot it, drag and drop it in, drag it in directly from the CF card or any kind of media card, and start cutting together. Amazing stuff.